Have you looked around lately? The division, the brokenness, the hate and unbelief. Sometimes it seems that love has given way to self and that faith far too often seems to turn to fear as we struggle under the weight of so much uncertainty. We ask ourselves, where is hope? But there is a God who meets us in the darkness. There is a God who had a plan from the dawn of time to bring hope to the world. He put it into motion thousands of years ago, and there is nothing that can stop it. Not impossible circumstances, not a hopeless human condition, no government or ruler or earthly power. No matter how far from God we try to push ourselves, there is nothing that can separate us from His love. And there is nothing that can stop the incredible grace and love of our God that began this holy night in a manger and was fulfilled on a cross.
God is with us even now his love is here let's sing that again come and worship as one voice come and worship worship Christ the newborn king God is with us even now his love is here his love is here Good to see you. My name is Jared. I'm the worship arts director here at Our Savior. We are so glad you have chosen to be with us tonight, and we want to welcome everyone online. Hey, everybody. Glad you are here with us. Say hello to your host. Talk to each other in the chat. Wish each other a Merry Christmas. It is good to be together. Let's pray. God, we are here to worship you. Lord, we are here to declare that you are God, that you are Majestic, that you are mighty, you are all-knowing. And God, we thank you that you loved us so much that you put forth a plan to save us, to reconcile us to yourself. Tonight is not about presents, God. It's not about trees or, or shopping or any of or Santa or any of that, God. Tonight is just about you, and that's why we're here. So accept our praises as we offer them as we begin our time together in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, amen. Tonight, friends, is the beginning of God's unstoppable plan to reconcile us to himself as we gather in worship. We gather beside the manger and we sing joy to the world. Let's sing that together as we worship.
Isn't it good to have some joy to share who we are in Christ? It's been a tough couple years, right? Yet here we are gathered as one body, reminded of who our God is, that in the midst of it all, he loves us, amen? And so we join our hearts and our minds, we adore him this God who was around before there was time, he loved each and every one of us so much that he took on flesh. Let's sing this. He who was before there was light walked across the pages of time. He who made every living thing behold him. He who heard humanity's cry left his throne to wake as a child. He became like the least of us. Behold him. Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the here at Our Savior. I want to welcome you to the kids' message.
celebrate Jesus' birth to thank God for giving the world the greatest gift ever, Jesus our Savior. God blesses us with so many wonderful things, but he knows that what people need most is a relationship with him, which Jesus came to mend after we people broke it by our sins. This time of year often makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside, happy and joyful. I think there's a difference between feeling happy and feeling joyful. Sometimes I can be happy one moment when things are good and then sad or angry the next minute when things don't go my way. But joy is one of the fruit of the spirit that the Bible describes and it doesn't go away when we have a bad day. It's found deep inside of us and comes from being friends with Jesus who is always with us. But sometimes we forget where our joy comes from and we look for happiness in other places. For example, when I get distracted, this can definitely happen to me. And this time of year with so many awesome things going on like Christmas cookie baking, decorating and shopping, they can really distract from the true reason why we celebrate Christmas. So let's imagine this bowl is our life and this jar is us. When we are distracted, we often try to fill up ourselves and our lives with things that make us happy for a little bit, like stuff, toys, books, video games, other things, but happiness from those things only lasts for a little while. Or we expect our family and friends to make us happy and fill us up, but they can eventually disappoint us. So that happiness runs out too. Or we try to avoid anything we don't enjoy and instead fill our time and ourselves up with all the fun times that we can have, but that happiness does not truly fill us up either. We were created to love and need Jesus, and it's only through him that we find true and lasting joy. This is the joy experienced by Mary and Joseph, the shepherds and the angels, the wise men and the disciples, and all those who truly know Jesus in the past and the present. It's a joy that Paul from the New Testament describes himself having even when he's in a bad situation like being stuck in jail for telling others about Jesus. This joy from Jesus fills us up and is enough to overflow and share with the other people in our lives. God gives us many blessings and lots to be thankful for, but the greatest gift to the world was his son, and that's our bottom line for today. Jesus is the greatest gift. Let's take time today, tomorrow, and the whole year ahead to thank God for his gift of the Savior born for us. Let's pray. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Christmas and all the blessings and gifts in our lives. We thank you most for our Savior, your Son, Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. It's Christmas break for Kids Connect for the next two Sundays, but come to worship with your family at 9 a.m. on both Christmas and New Year's Day. Merry Christmas, everyone.
gift is given so God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his hand no ear may hear his coming but in this world of sin where meek souls will Receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Let's pray. Uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for tonight and for being born, for choosing to come to earth, not just to show away, but to be our Savior. And so in the stillness and the quiet of this moment, may it be more than just a memory, may it be more than just remembering an event, may it be a miracle in our lives tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. I'm Pastor Tim. It's great to be with you here tonight. Welcome home if you grew up here and are back from college or from work or from like lifelong learning. We'll just, we'll just put it that way. Welcome home. If you're new here, a very special welcome to you. You know, um, you know just kind of look around. You can look around. All right. Don't like creepy stare at the person next to you, but you know, just take a look around. All right. And I can imagine that very first Christmas, uh, people in Bethlehem and Jerusalem and Judea probably would have looked, maybe sounded like, maybe felt like you collectively do here tonight. What I mean by that is this, is that, that there were people, no doubt, who were believers in the Messiah, waiting for God to show up, that after thousands of years of prophecy and of foretelling and of story sharing, that they had the hope that one day all would be made right, that, that there would be a Savior who would come, and, and some, somehow, some way, they wouldn't know exactly how, but somehow, some way would forgive their sins, that they would, they would have all things set right, and everything that is broken in the world and, and breaks our heart, that makes us cry, that makes us feel just downright yucky inside would, would be made well. There are people back at the time of that first Christmas, too, who I, I would say didn't believe that promise, who, who would laugh at that promise, who would think that <laughs> that's just wishful thinking. And, and maybe there, there are some folks, I'm not going to be naive enough to think that there aren't folks here who would think that of Christmas today, that, yeah, Christmas is just another day that we, we got to get through and survive. I, I, I got to go see family. I got to deal with my kids. I got I to gotta deal with all the hoopla that comes from this time of year. And if I can just get to the next year, maybe uh, then I can, I can work toward that promotion. I can work toward that degree. I can, I can check the box that, so that I can feel somehow that I'm contributing to this life. So there were people who hoped in the promise. There were people who didn't hope in the promise. And, and then there was what I call the mushy middle. Everybody say mushy middle, mushy middle. And, and this is where, where I believe most of the people were back at that first Christmas. They, they knew a little bit about, about all the prophecies and the hope and, and everything that was said to come. There were folks who, who were on this side that, that really didn't buy it. Then there were the folks kind of in the middle like, okay, uh, whether it's true or not, I'm all right, who am I to judge? I, I, I'm not going to get in the middle of it. Maybe if it's true, then great. If it's not, hey, you know, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I haven't lost anything. And the people in the mushy middle just kind of become apathetic. Just kind of go through the motions, you know what I mean? Like you sing the carols and, and you share the gifts and, and then you move on and the gifts go back in, in the corner, and the carols go back down the playlist. Swipe, delete. The Santa hats go away, and, and the family gatherings are soon forgotten. You know, the mushy middle where most of us, I believe, live. Because because if, if you live in the United States of America, and, and maybe you're tuning in from another part of the world, it might be different in your culture. But here in the United States of America, it seems to be one of these things that that comes around every time of year, and we have these traditions, and, and many of us, we just kind of go through the motions. That's just a memory. You know, uh, back in Jesus' day, right after all this takes place, uh, a few years later, Jesus, he dies and rises again, and, and that's what we believe as Christians, right? Uh, he dies and, and rises again, and that's how we have forgiveness. And, and you fast forward a, a few more years, and, and people are gathered like this, and, and they're hearing the story, and, and there are people who believe it, and people who don't believe it, and people who, who are just kind of curious and asking questions. They, they might doubt some pieces of it because it just seems too good to be true. And, and so they go up to this man named Luke, 
all right? He's a doctor. He's one of them. Uh, he, he's a Greek, so, so he has a lot of this knowledge, and, and it's one of those, you got to show me, you got to prove it to me sort of guys. And they say, Luke, go around and, and, and gather up all these stories. Go ahead and, and, and listen to all the stories that everybody has, the believers and the non-believers and the people in the mushy middle, and, and document them because we want to know for sure. We want to know without a doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that this Messiah, this Jesus is for real. That he was in fact born. That he lived, that he died, that he rose again. And he's for us. That in other words, that Christmas happens. And that's the, the beautiful thing about, about a night like tonight. That, that as you look around this room, that Christmas happens for all of us. The, the people who believe, the people who don't believe, the people in the mushy middle who, who maybe believe and doubt and are curious and or maybe wondering, what does this all have to do with me today? So Luke, he, he gathers up all the stories, and, and he begins telling, telling this, this massive story. He talks about and shares the story of, of Zechariah, a man named Zechariah, where, where he was visited by an angel. And, and him in his old age with his wife Elizabeth would have a baby and name him John. And believe it or not, that, that, that's a true story. And, and Luke says, that's so true that I'm going to include that in the book that I'm writing. And, and then, and then he, he documents, and because it's a true story, that an angel came to a girl, a girl, a young maiden named Mary, and said, Mary, you've been chosen by God. Not because of anything you've done, but because God has looked upon you with goodness and favor and says, you, you Mary, you're going to have a baby. And, and by the way, he's going to be the Savior of the world. He's going to be the Messiah. You're going to name him Jesus. And, and then along with Mary's story, he, he would include this man named Joseph who, who was engaged to Mary to be his wife. And, and Mary, ooh, Mary, uh, uh, we, we haven't been together yet. Like, like, how can this be true? But it was. And Luke, Luke documents that down. And, and, then, and, then, and then there was a census in the, in the Roman world where everyone needed to be recorded, and uh, it was the worst form of contact tracing ever. And so they would come, come together in, into the town where their lineage would have all been rooted in. And, and Joseph, because he was engaged to be married to Mary, both him and Mary went to Bethlehem because it was the town of David. And it was at that time, as the story goes, Jesus is born in a stable, in a manger. And then there were shepherds, and then there were magi, and, and Luke's writing all of this down. Why? Because it's true. Because Christmas happens. It happens for the believer. It happens for the non-believer. It happens for the people in the mushy middle. It happens for you, and it happens for me. And it can't be stopped. And that's Luke's entire point, is that it can't be stopped. Christmas happens for you and for me and for all people. And tonight, like tonight, God says, all y'all, you're in. You all, I, I, God says, I, I, I love you so much that, that I cannot bear the pain to see you suffer any longer. So I am going to step down. And instead of you making your own solutions, I'm going to bring you the solution. Which, which is the best news ever because it means that you and I, we don't need to walk out of here with a different plan. We don't need to walk out of here and go home and think that we have to have the best presence or the best way or, or we have to act uh, like perfect angels, right, kids? Like, you can fight on the way home, all right, and Jesus still loves you. That's not permission to do so. <laughs> but it's true, right? Santa Claus might, might want to know whether you've been bad or good, but, you know, Jesus, it doesn't matter if you're bad or good. He still loves you anyway. And that's the truth. For the believer, for the non-believer, for the people in the mushy middle. Because Christmas happens, and it's unstoppable. It means that, that we, we, we don't need to stand on the platform of our own goodness and our own stuff and our own work and our own achievements that, that we can say, this baby born in the manger, I, I might have questions. I, I, I live here in the middle, and, and I don't quite understand it. Uh, but, 
But if that's for real and if Christmas happens for me, then, then I need to get off of my platform and let Jesus take the center stage and the spotlight of my life. Because that's what it means for Christmas to happen. You know, it's the entire world focused in on that manger that very first Christmas. It wasn't about the shepherds. It wasn't about the magi, the wise men. It wasn't even about Mary and Joseph. Who was it about? It was about Jesus. This baby boy born in a manger for you. He is the unstoppable light that enters the world for you and for me. Because there's a lot of darkness in the world. Would you agree? There's a lot of darkness. There's a lot of darkness in our own lives, if we're honest. And that's the miracle of Christmas. It's not just a memory. It's a miracle that in the middle of the darkness of our world and our own lives, Jesus can be born, God can come and bring light into the world. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to invite you to, to take out your candles. Take out your candles. Kids, you can turn them on so I know where you are. All right, kids, turn them on. <laughs> kind of wave them in the air. All right, all right, I see where you are. All right, all right, kids, keep them on, keep them on, because, you know, I was thinking about this. And, and the truth is, you know, why, why do we light candles? <laughs> well, some of us experienced that, or at least had some fear of this uh, just in the last 24, 48 hours, right? When the power goes out, it gets dark. When our own power goes out, it's dark. When the powers of this world go out, it gets dark. So we need light. In fact, John, who's like Luke, wrote and said that Jesus is the light full of grace and truth and love. And as we sing Silent Night, uh, we're going to light candles and not just be reminded, but to experience the miracle that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is indeed love's pure light. Let's stand as we sing Silent Night. Adults, you can turn on the candle. And, and as you notice throughout the room as the lights dim down in darkness, how bright it gets. And, just one flame can give off a little bit of light, but collectively, I mean, you and I, Jesus lights up not just our lives, but he lights up the world tonight. Emperor Augustus ordered a census of the Roman Empire, and this was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All the people went to register in their cities where their ancestors lived. So Joseph went from Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a Judean city called Bethlehem. And Joseph, a descendant of King David, went to Bethlehem because David had been born there. Joseph went there to register with Mary. And she had been promised to him in marriage and was pregnant. And while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to have her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there wasn't any room for them in the inn. 
shepherds in their fields near Bethlehem, and they were taking turns watching their flock during the night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord filled the area with light. But they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I have good news for you, a message that will fill everyone with joy. Today, your Savior, Christ the Lord, was born in David's city. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find an infant wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly a large army of angels appeared with the angel. And they were praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those who have his good will. Silence left them, they went back to heaven. And the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told us about. And so they went quickly and found Mary and Joseph with the baby who was lying in a manger. When they saw the child, they repeated what they had been told to them. And everyone who heard the shepherd's story, they were amazed. And Mary treasured all these things in her heart and always thought about them. And as the shepherds returned to their flock, they glorified and praised God for everything they had seen and heard. Everything happened the way the angel had told them. Let's sing that first verse again, just our voices. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer in a little different way with a little bit of a different uh, Christmas wording. Let's say this together. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, hallowed be your name. Make your kingdom be complete and let your will be done here as it is in heaven. In a season where we think of, of ourselves, Remind us that we are sustained by the bread you provide each day. Forgive us when we put the things of this world before you. And be our savior when we fail to show mercy and grace to those around us. Protect us from those things that would entice us to turn away from you. 
and deliver us from every evil. You come to us now, born this holy night, and you will come again in glory when we will join all heaven and earth in giving you blessing, honor, and glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, there was another time when the world was dark, uh, and it wasn't Christmas. Uh, it was a day when Jesus was crucified on the cross, and if you know the story, you know how, how dark the world became that day as well. And it sat in darkness for three long days. But then that same light came back, didn't it? That same light came back for you and for me, for those who believed, for those who didn't believe, for those in the mushy middle who had questions, who were curious, who were trying to make sense of it. And, and that's the light you get to carry tonight. Maybe you, you have the questions and you're curious about what Christmas means for you and that relationship that you have. And maybe it's him or her that would just love, uh, you, you would just love for them to, to ask you, will, will, will I be your forever person? <laughs> And you're waiting for that ring. You're waiting for that commitment. And, and you, you've been waiting for that commitment for so long. Maybe you're in a relationship right now, a marriage, or, or maybe you're engaged and, and you're wondering, where is this going? Maybe it's just a rough time and, and you're in that mushy middle. And tonight, Christmas, it's, it's that renewal of hope that in the middle of that darkness, there's still light. Maybe it's in your finances, and, and if truth be told, if, if, if you would open your, your checkbook, your, your Quicken account, your, your financial statements, and it, it looks pretty dark, but, you know, Jesus, the light of the world, can even shine a light onto your finances. Or your future career, or, or the ability or inability to have kids, or, or the aging parent, or whatever that darkness is tonight. It doesn't matter if you're a believer or unbeliever or you're in the mushy middle. The light is for you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight this light is for me. God, as I, as I just stand here and we, we just reflect in the silence of the light on this calm night, Lord, not only be born in our thoughts and in our memories, but may we experience the miracle of you being born in us. In the darkness of our hearts, may you burn bright as we leave this place. Over our thoughts, the darkness of the thoughts, maybe their thoughts about ourselves, maybe their thoughts about this world, maybe their thoughts about whatever's happening next as we leave this place, Lord. May your light shine. May it be filled with love and kindness and grace and forgiveness. In fact, that is what your light is for us. Lord, may we be reminded that this light that we burn tonight, it's not only an idea, it's not only a philosophy. It's a person. It's you, Jesus. And so tonight, as we go, Lord, may you bless us and keep us. May you make your face shine on us. Be gracious to us. Look upon us with your love and your favor like you did Mary, like you did Joseph, like you did that first Christmas, and let your light burn in us, which gives us your peace tonight and forever. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say, Amen. And turn off your lights and... We're going to close out by singing Oh Holy Night together, all right? And I'll let you sit. You've been standing for a while. You can be seated if you like. Let's sing this.
fall to our knees. We fall to our knees, Lord, we adore you. With angels above, we bow down before you. The light of your love shines bright on this holy night. Your love shines bright on this holy night. Oh, your love shines so bright on this holy night. We want to thank you for joining us tonight. And if you're a visitor, if it's your first time here, you've been here maybe once or twice, but you consider yourself a visitor, we have some gifts for y'all in the back um, as you head out. So church tomorrow, if you're so inclined, um, 9 a.m. right here, Christmas Day. It's a special day that we don't usually do uh, uh, Christmas Day, but it's a special day. So thank you so much for coming tonight. Merry Christmas. Be safe out there. Bye-bye.